The following contest is scheduled for one fall, one submission, and knockout. To decide the winner, and it is for the Animated Wrestling League World Tag Team Championship. Good evening, wrestling fans from the world-famous AWL Arena in Tokyo, Japan. This is the Animated Wrestling League, episode 290. We are at the halfway point of season 15. Oh God, I wish I didn't have the flu earlier this season because we are way behind schedule. It's gonna be the first of our double shot weekends. We're gonna have double shot weekends throughout the rest of December leading up to AWL 300, which we can now announce will take place in the Tokyo Dome. That's right, the biggest arena in the nation will play host to the Animated Wrestling League to conclude our 15th season of broadcasts. And tonight we are starting off with a tag team championship match in the men's division. The women's, the Joshi tag team titles will be defended as well tonight, as will the grand championship in our main event this evening, the faction war continues. We have got so much action to cram into an hour. Let's get started as the Flying Yukis, the youngest, least experienced tag team in the tag team division, after a grueling war with Monster Union, are sitting on three points, the three points necessary, the three, it's technically one victory, but three consecutive matches, they have three points that they can use to challenge Dr. Jigoku's enslaved tag team champions. There you see them. All for Dr. Jigoku, Subite, Jigoku Hakase no Tameni, H03DB02, and Dr. Jigoku himself present at ringside along with M05, who we will see in action actually in our very next match after this. He's going to go one on one with his own son, El Hio del Magiku, a match we've been waiting for for a very long time, finally happening tonight on the first half of Double Shot Weekend 1 of Season 15. Former tag team champions, the Dune Bunny and Hakaisha, now DB02, H03. Once upon a time, they were the Destroyers of Doom. This is technically the second tag team title reign for this pair of wrestlers. This will be the first title defense. We've had a lot of points on the board as of late, thanks to the tag Matsuri. And we've had multiple teams getting their hands on three points going into this contest. Frankly, um, it's a bit of a mismatch here, ladies and gentlemen, at least that's what I would argue. These enslaved borderline inhuman monsters versus a couple of young up and coming little more than rookies quite frankly this will be the first tag team title opportunity of the careers of the flying yukis you know you can show it's a flash nobu yuki they're incredible athletes but frankly i just don't see it happening especially with m05 and dr jigoku himself at ringside that's going to be a factor those beautiful tag team title belts, the oldest titles in the AWL, up for grabs right now. Let's go to ringside. Introducing first the challengers. Tonight, they cash in their three points. Hiroyuki Shota, Flash Nobuyuki, the Flying Yuki. Game face is on tonight. And their opponents, they are the reigning and defending Animated Wrestling League. World's Tag Team Champions, DB02, H03. Tonight, they make their first title defense, the Doreko. I wish they would stop saying This that. is an officially sanctioned World's Tag Team Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL Senior Official, Joey Babaganoush, in charge. It's going to be Hiroyuki Shota starting us off against the Doom Bunny, DB02. 30 minutes on the clock, extended time limit for title matches. Bunny Kanrana to start us off, and no defense from Hiroyuki Shota. I got to hope that's nerves. These young kids, these flying Yukis, they've got to have 
Butterfly's in their stomach the size of Mothra right now. Collar and elbow tie-up, kick to the midsection. Oh, miss with that clothesline. Oh, you call yourself flying, kid? Nobody flies better than the Doom Bunny, DB02. Still enslaved to Dr. Jigoku. Collar and elbow tie-up in the Draycore corner. Flying cross body block. Shows the more technically minded of the flying Yuki's loves that sleeper hold. Whereas Flash and Nobuyuki, more flashy, more high impact, but a vertical suplex, or a uh, vertical drop brain, or a vertical brain buster, if you will, maybe you know the Japanese about it, at a trapezius claw hold. That, I don't think that's quite a good strategy here because Hiroyuki Shoto just doesn't have the height, the weight, or the leverage to really sink in that hold on the trapezius muscle. He goes, he goes right back to it. Got to give him points for uh, persistency. Feel your own shoulder. Feel sort of that divot between the neck and uh, the shoulder. That's your trapezius. Push a finger or two into that. Lightly as you can. That hurts like hell. And imagine someone just clawing away at it. Uh-oh. Bunny drop! Bunny hop! Bunny hop! Bunny hop! And now calling for a little experiment in triple team action. Notice how Dr. Jigoku not getting his hands dirty here, but he's loving this on the outside. Jigoku still with that golden opportunity around his neck. It allows him to demand any match, any time, any place. He's been keeping his powder dry on that for a while, and the Doray Court just in dominant control here. DB02 just taking a break in the corner a second ago. Hopefully he'll regret that. Monkey flip, or bunny flip if you insist, out of the corner by Hibiyuki Shota, who, oh, gets a boot to the face for his troubles. Up, around, helicopter head scissors by DB02. We're not even four minutes into this. Another monkey flip. Hibiyuki Shota, Saruno Chikara Kamashiro Naine. Up we go, with the uppercut. Backdrop driver, dropping the poor kid right on his head. Two of the most recent graduates of the AWL Dojo. The Flying Yuki is in, oh, getting outclassed here in high-flying professional wrestling. There is yet to be a legal tag on either side. And DB02 could have won the match right there, could have retained the tag team title. Oh, wait a minute, cheap, dirty shot by H03. But a clean escape by Kibiyuki Shota. And into the sleeper hold. We've seen him win matches with this, but not right now, not at this juncture. Uh-oh. M05 getting involved, distracting the referee. After all that, oh, and there's a Hurricane Rada fight for by Yuki. Kibiyuki Shota countering the interference of M05 at a big fist drop. Well placed, that could break skin, that could draw blood. That could lead to a referee stoppage, as a matter of fact. Uh-oh, Usagi, DDT, speaking of blood. Blood drawn here tonight, the AW will be in only our first contest. Oh God, yeah, here to show to bust it open. Unfortunately, you've seen that both members of the Flying Yuki's have a tendency to bleed in their matches. Get that checked out, as a matter of fact. Irish looking to the corner. We're about to see our first tag. Yes, we are. Tag Kogeki, tag team attack. Completely legal for five seconds. Oh, double elbows. Simple and effect. Wait a minute. Hiroyuki Shota fighting back. And he gets his arm broken and his head taken off for his trouble. Pick him up, put him down, make it hurt, all for Dr. Goku. Oh! Open pick off, open pick off. Five minutes, five minutes past them. 25 minutes left on the clock, and A uh oh, M05 getting involved here. I will remind you of the champion's advantage in the case of count out, time limit draw, or disqualification. The title is to remain with the champions. As Flash Nobuyuki 
finally gets the legal tag. This is a handicap match right now. Maybe you have to tilt it down and possibly unconscious on the outside, bleeding out. As the face paint wearing, garishly dressed, Flash Nobuyuki, the hard hitter. The, the, the brawler, if you might say, of the flying Yuki. So he can certainly fly when he has to. That flying spin kick of his, absolutely incredible. But he's one of the he's the one who beat Monster Union in the third match of their series with a German suplex hold, jump, fly down. There's a crash landing there. And the cover, one. And a kick out at one from the wrestler with the best win-loss record and the most career wins in his AWO tenure, and that is H03. That's dating all the way back to his time with Yarina Talent Management Incorporated, Crisis Bundong, and then his time as the, the savior of the AWO, the commissioner's enforcer, and now as a slave to Dr. Jigoku. Indian Deathlock applied. They call themselves the Flying Yukis, but these guys are, wait a minute, the bad doctor himself getting involved. And that's all the opportunity. H03 needs the power bomb. Jesus Christ, his head went right to the ropes. Oh my God. Uh-oh, going for the hat trick. In the AW, we call this the hat trick suplex. Subtype, German. He's thinking he's Satsuwaza. He's thinking Tatsumaki! He's Satsuwaza, the Tatsumaki! Tornado in Japanese. One, two, kick out. Somehow, pure youthful guts, determination, and possibly stupidity. And Flash Nobuyuki kicks out of the Tatsumaki. And what will the champions have? Double shoulder tackle. And again, simple but effective. Super kick by DD02 as H03 exits the ring. Wait a minute, Hurricane Rod out of nowhere. Is he going to try to fly? No, he thinks better of it, realizes his opponent's already up on his feet. Gets caught in the backdrop driver. Irish whip into the neutral corner now. DD02 is going to be thinking, but no. Oh, no, 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 no. Disaster. He's thinking the tree of what? Is he actually going to go to the, the Flying Yuki's corner? Yes, he is. Is he actually stupid enough to think this is going to work? God, here you can show the blinded by the blood. He doesn't see what's happening. Coast to coast. The leaping ability second to none. That, that's got to be it, everybody. One. No! A breakup by somebody. I think it was Hiroyuki Shota. I think the referee got more of that than anybody else. Arm drag by the, by the, by the pink bunny man. The pink and purple bunny man. Oh, right back into that bunny con Rana. European uppercut by the challenger. German! German Simplex hold up! One, two, three! They did it! They did it! The Flying Yuki's are the champions! The Flying Yuki's are the tag team champions of the world! How? They took so much punishment, so much offense! Blood shed! That should have been it right there, the Tatsumaki! But somehow a good, quick German Suplex perfectly executed! Your winners! And the on the Minute Wrestling League, Tag Team Champions of the World, the Flying Yuki! Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling fans around the world, we are only getting started tonight. That was the first of three title matches. But we have new Tag Team Champions, the Underdogs, the Rookies, Rookies No More. Wait a minute, guys, what's going on here? Oh, crap. Out of nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, that, that's 
That's Dr. Jigoku's main offensive force. That's the Augments, Project Tetsu, and Project Zed. Dr. Jigoku's been doing his, his Undertaker Dark Order thing of, as of late. We saw it last week in DB02. And now these behemoths, these monsters, attacking the AWL World's Tag Team Champions, the Flying Yukis. That's gonna take some getting used to saying, quite frankly. And the Tag Team Champions fighting back. And the Dore Corps, part of the forces of Jigoku, losing out tonight, losing the tag titles, using the only championships they actually control. Dr. Jigoku, by my reckoning, has one, two, three, four, five, six, has seven wrestlers under his control and now controls no titles in the AWL in any division. Hiroyuki Shota sending the zombie monstrosity, modern day Frankenstein, out to the outside and takes him over to the Fireman's Carry takedown and Flash is going to fly! Going for the flash stopper, but no! Project Tetsu. This, this is getting ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a wrestling match. This is a fight. The referee trying to stop this. Not bothering to ring the bell a half a dozen times because that never, ever, ever works. flying spin kick. Oh, he's going to cover it. There, there's no... You know, Joey Bob is going to play along with it, I guess. This is not a wrestling match. But we've got to get we got to get some control in here. Get some... Where, where's Chrono Security when we... Oh, yeah, we canceled our contract, didn't we? Get some officials out here. Get some... Get somebody out here. This is ridiculous. Everybody's down, but the augment. Coming up next... Father versus son with an opportunity to save a man's soul on the line. Well, Jigoku's minions, the rest of the Drey Corps, hightailed it after DB02 and H03 lost the tag team titles. They scrammed as soon as the real augments came out, which means that M05 now having to make his way back out here. And notice how despite, like I said, seven wrestlers in the stable, M05 in the doghouse, Dr. Jigoku's broken toy as far as he's concerned. The following contest is scheduled for oh, one fall. No. Introducing first, making his way to the ring from the laboratory, representing the Doray oh, M05. Ladies and gentlemen, the stakes of this match could not be higher. If M05 wins this match, he will enter the AWL Best Four and give Dr. Jigoku's team an opportunity at the AWL Grand Championship. However, if his son, El Hio Del Magicu, wins this match, then there will be a match between M05 and the current Grand Champion, whether he be champion or not, next week, with the control mask on the line, Lucha de Apuestas. If that control mask can be removed, the power of the Star of Aztec can purify the soul of Majiku and maybe bring him back to us as Wyvern was brought back not that long ago. And his opponent, being accompanied by Hassan and the reigning animated wrestling league, round the champion Aztec Kaisanio. Representing Seifai El Hio Gelmajiku. 
It's been a very long time coming, but finally, El Hio de Majku, the opportunity to save his father from the forces of Jigoku. I don't speak Spanish, no idea what that means. 10 minutes on the clock for this one fall singles match collar and elbow tie up. And how many hundreds of times have they gone through that same collar and elbow drill in the family basement or the family gym back home in Mexico City, Mexico. El Hio Del Magico, as is customary in Lucha Libre, starting very, very young, began his training in elementary school, as I understand it, with his father at their home gym. When he came of age, he did a stint in the AWL Dojo before joining the Animated Wrestling League. His mother's a very big woman. I know you're asking, why is this guy this tall, this buff? If he's the son of that little dude, but he is. We've, we've, we've run the tests, and we're sure about that. Majiku falling to the forces of Dr. Goku. Now a mindless zombie, Super Tate, Goku Hakusei no Tanami. All he can say, a look at this opportunity, Nox. Oh, drop kick into the Tree of Woe. And now El Hio going up to the top. He can fly just as well as his father, and he basically just sat on his dad's head. That worked a little too well, quite frankly. But El Hio Damajiku wins this match. The control mask will be on the line next week. If M05 wins this, Dr. Jigoku has another wrestler in the AWL best four. My friend, Tiger Breaker. Uh, imagine the uh, the school unified school of the Tiger Star won't be happy to hear that. We'll see that, but they're probably preparing, or they should be preparing for their match in the faction Senso that's coming up next. Jumon casting the spell of La Mystica. And a perfect counter rollover, roll through by El Hio Del Magiku is uh, his team captain, Hassan, moving on from the outside. He knows how important this parental rescue mission is for El Hio de Magico, because it would be for anybody. Imagine, if you had the chance to save your father from an evil cult of zombies, you have to do too. El Hio de Magico right now setting up Shining Legacy! Into the cover, the Shining Legacy. One, two, three, that is it. There is hope for Magiku. Shining Legacy. A legacy of the Warrior of Light. Would we see the return of that once great luchador next week? Here is your winner, El Hio Del Magico. You see Aztec Kaiser Neo in the background. He will face M05 next week with the control caller on the line. Thank goodness. There you see the current semifinals of the Faction Senso. TBD? Yeah, let's... Let's D some TB, I think. That didn't make any sense. Here come the Tigers. The following contest is an Atomico match. Can do four one ball. And it is the fourth match in the Faction Senso. Introducing first, the quartet of Tiger Boss 2, Tiger Zadarku, Gene Tiger Junior, and Black Tiger Justice. Together they are the Unified School of the Tiger Style. Four golden opportunities on the line for the winners of this tournament. But for the losers of these opening round matches, their very careers at stake. This will be a classic battle of good versus evil. The disciplined, strong style of the Tigers versus the dark forces of the pit. You think Dr. Jigoku's bad? Wait till you see this monstrosity of a quartet. However, they do have one glaring weakness. Hello, opponents! <laughs>
The winner of the 2019 Oshogatsu Taikai is Shadow Beasts and the Demon Isen. Gamba! You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen, alongside the monstrous, the evil, the demonic Gamba Hishi Dark and his minions, his shadow beasts, Gamba Shadows is what they're called apparently, the demon Gisei will compete in this professional wrestling match. He still has that 2019 New Year's Tournament belt around his waist, does Gambahishi Dark. And he will almost certainly qualify for the 2020 tournament if he is still in the AWL. That used to be a human being. Those shadow beasts were never anything at all. One fall, Atomicos match, 30 minute time limit. Tiger versus Demon to start us off. Oh! Gambahishi Dark since losing the AWL Brand Championship to Aztec Kaiser Neo at AWL 80, sorry, 280. Oh, 80, that would've been a while back. Since losing the title at AWL 280, oh, what is this? Up, down! Samoan drop neck breaker combination as the tag mage, one of the shadow clones, the shadow beasts, the Samotra of Darkness. Brain Buster, if it even has a brain. Since losing the Grand Championship, somehow that loss, that despair, that feeling of failure that has empowered the darkness within Gambahishi Dark, giving him this new, bigger, stronger muscle form. Tag made out to Sheen Tiger Jr. Oh, with the, oh, look at this, up and around and down. Former AWL Tag Team Champion, two-time Tag Champion. Sorry, one-time Tag Champion. All four of the Tigers that you see here are former Tag Team Champions. Gamba, of course, a former Tag Team Champion as well. Grand Slam Champion, as a matter of fact. Across the high pot, new springs, he say there. Nobody's gonna tag he say. I promise you, the manager in the match here, the confidence of Gamba Hishi Dark, uh-oh, no, 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 up, guillotine elbow. As the Lord of the Pit returns to the squared circle. Years ago, Gamba made a pact with the Dark Forces to give himself the opportunity to tap into a stronger, more powerful form of himself in order to protect the AWL. But the temptation to use that power in regular matches, in title matches, that became too strong. He fell to the temptation. He fell to the darkness. He couldn't control it. And now someone who's dragged himself out of darkness. Tiger Zadaku. One of the final trainees of Global Wrestling Monopoly. And I believe the last, with the exception of Athena Jane, the last Global Wrestling Monopoly refugee here in the AWL. Now they go to the outside, that's gonna be a bad thing for Tiger of the Dark, I would argue. And I should point out in the event that there is a count out or a time limit. Actually, no, I'm sorry, what? Okay, yes. In the event of a count out, the winning team would advance, the loser team would enter the losing tournament, losers tournament, and you had a time limit draw, both teams are eliminated. There'll be a playoff match between the captains of the team. I'm just being told this from my headset right now. In the event of a time limit draw, 
both teams will be eliminated from the main tournament. Uh-oh, here we go. And the captains of these two teams would face off one-on-one -on -one to see who enters the loser's tournament. Darkness falls after the Tiger faint kick. And now a call for the Tiger Triple Powerbomb. We've seen many factions in the AWO use this technique. It's one of the reasons we're having this tournament is to clear out some of these damn factions. Hopefully make that a little more minimalistic. Into the cover. Referee getting into position. He hates this move. One, two, three, go! Less than a throw. Look at that! Spear to the back. Half a second from victory, between victory and defeat. Taiga Zadaku nearly defeating the former grand champion. Running cutter. The four Tigers each bring such a different set of skills to the table, but they are all unified in their discipline. Unified as the Tiger style. And the black super kick. Black Tiger super kick. And what the heck is Tiger the Dark doing? He's calling for it yet again, a second time. One triple power bomb took Tiger the Dark to a second away from victory. A second time. It's got to be over, ladies and gentlemen. Three position one, two, three, no! Yet again, the breakup. Go from pick on, go from pick on. Five minutes, five minutes past. Time call made. Kamba, Zuzu Dark still somehow standing, and the kid gonna regret that a Tigers, the ultimate insult. Oh, and a chop block right from behind. Dirty tactics, insult to injury. Using the Tigers' own signature, Tiger Suplex. And now a. This is ridiculous. Absolutely disgusting. Now into a dragon sleeper. Trying to take Tiger the Dark out. But no, the Tiger forces his way through. The powerhouse, easily the, the I think actually Pamper found the strongest member of the Tiger's team here. And the tag, no, no tag made, says the official. Irish whip across by Potnus, and the referee goes down. Accidental, incidental contact. I won't be able to fall the Oh, God. Now what is he doing? Gamba, Hishi, Dark. We're not used to seeing him in this sort of a multi-man situation. He's really a singles wrestler. And nearly breaking Tiger, Tiger the Dark in half here. Oh, no, broken up by the Cub. And he's going to regret it yet again, I think. An elevated abdominal stretch by the illegal Shadow Man. But we're going to have to try to get control in here. One in, three out. That's the way it's got to be. We're going to have a decisive victor here. A couple of haymakers. Up. Bloody Sunday. The demon with Bloody Sunday. And now he's thinking about his Isatsuwaza, Akuma no Tsubasa, Wings of the Devil. The Tiger of the Dark has it scouted, ladies and gentlemen. He escapes out the back. And it's going for, no, backdrop driver. Saido Suplex, is that Saido Suplex? I think it was. 22.30, going up, power bomb, into the cover. One, everybody's in, to go. And again, it's Sheen Tiger Jr. trying to do the damage. Yosh Tomek. Red alert, whatever you want to call it. Irish whip back into the Tiger Zone. And the tag is made. Are we going to see? No, we're not. We're going to see a little receipt. The Tiger saw a maneuver earlier, thought it was a good idea. Now, seven minutes, into, sorry, eight minutes into this. Tiger Mask Team, your legal fighter, alongside Gamba Hishi Dark. 
and taking the majority of the work here. I think, I think Gamba believes the shadows in Gisei are just a formality. I think he believes he can win this on his own. Tiger, breaker! And we see this up and down. The winners of this match will face the forces of Jigoku. Will, it, will the Tigers get to eliminate the both of the most evil factions in the AWL or more possibly at this point considering the stamina of the uh, former world champion, former grand champion, that we have Goku versus Gamba. It happened. That's what I love about these tournaments, so many possibilities as the shadow takes over for the master. The shadow is still the smaller form. It used to be what God, that's what Gamba used to look like. That used to be the profile, that used to be the physique. Tiger stalking his prey. To the Tiger Bomb, yes he is, Isatsuwaza! Original Tiger Bomb! The legs are Nelson, referee's out of position. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Damn it, no reversal. One, not this way, two. Oh, thank goodness. By all rights, this match should be over, ladies and gentlemen. No, inverted DDT by the Tiger. Right to the face, keep the opponent down. That's smart strategy. Kipun take off, Kipun take off. 10 minutes, 10 minutes off. Third of the way through the time limit now. Remember, in the event of a count out, both teams are eliminated. Nobody gets a golden opportunity, and Tiger takes a bad fall right in front of us. <laughs> Referee begins the 20 count. One of Gamba's shadows and Tiger Mask 2, a Season 0 original. One of two in this match alongside Gamba himself. Up, down! Right, face first into the steel steps. The Tiger holding nothing back against this inhuman shadow beast. Oh, right! And you will believe a shadow can bleed. I don't know what sort of dark, demonic force creates Gamba's shadows, but we now know for a fact they can bleed. Knee Trembler by the Tiger. Uh-oh. And Gisei, oh no, no, Gisei's not getting involved in this. Way too much of a coward. Yeah, I said it. Finally, the Tiger returns to the ring. 11 count by the official. There's the 12 as both men return. Gamba's shadow looking maybe for Akamano Sabasa. Yes, he is. The shadows can do it. Everything Gamba can do, they can do. Akamano Sabasa. Into the cover. This could be it. One, two, three, and that's it. The bad guys win. Bloody Sunday to the Dark Tiger. But more than enough of a receipt, more than enough damage. Tiger the Dark coming very close to defeating Gamba. Which is a which is a feat. Not many people have done that. Check this out. Tiger Bomb. That should have been all. But it wasn't. Here are your winners. Gamba! The Tigers are doomed. Yeah. yeah, the Tigers are not doomed. They just have to enter the Losers Tournament. <sighs> we have two more championship matches tonight. We've already seen one set of tag team titles change hands. Will we see another? This is the first match for Akira Merine since losing the Joshi Singles Championship. Several weeks the ago. following contest is scheduled for one fall, one submission, and knockout. To decide the winner, and in score, the Animated Wrestling League, Yoshi Tag Team Championship. The first tag team ever hired by the AWL, Yin and Yang, are original tag team champions. 
Before it was a world title, the AWL Tag Team titles first went around the waist of these two lovely women. And that was before the Tokyo Athletic Committee decided no more intergender wrestling. They came out of retirement when they heard that we were starting a Joshi division. And this is, I believe, their third opportunity at the tag team titles. However, this time, this isn't the Queens of Wrestling you might remember. This is still the group that dominates all the gold in this division, but no longer can one of their members refer to themselves as undefeated. Still using Akira Marinay's uh, video, interesting, didn't expect that. The Queens of Wrestling. Still the Joshi Tag Team Champions, Akira Marine, however, no longer undefeated. It's the first match she will have had since losing the Joshi singles title. And it's, it's a thing with professional athletes. When you're on a hot streak, when you're on an undefeated streak, you're on top of the world. Nothing can touch you, but then you lose this, as everybody eventually does. How do you deal with defeat? How will the Mistress of a Thousand Holes deal with the fact that she's no longer Akira Two Belts or whatever? How will she handle loss? Introducing first the challengers, fighting out of the human psyche. Tonight, they cash in their three points. The original tag team, Yin and Yang. And their opponents, they are the reigning and defending Animated Wrestling League, Joshi Tag Team Champions. Tonight, making their fifth title defense, Dragoness and Akira Medine, the Queens. All wrestling! This is an officially sanctioned Joshi Tag Team Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL Senior Official Joey Bogdanuch in charge. There's just something different in the atmosphere. This is not a normal Queens of Wrestling match, ladies and gentlemen. 30 minutes on the clock, titles on the line, one fall to a finish. And a diving clothesline out of the gate by Yin from the light side of the human psyche. Good old fashioned body slam by the daughter of the dragon, second generation professional wrestler. And a spear by Yin into the quick cover for the titles. One. I don't think that was even a one count. That was 0.87. That, that could have been a 20 second title change. Good sportsmanship by Dragonus, allowing Yin to get back to her feet at least. Over the punch, blocked. Sportsmanship, always good to see. I'm not gonna criticize it. Up, up, down! Double leg takedown by the Dragoness. The Queens of Wrestling, they've been the dominant force in the Joshi division for, for over a year now. And Dragoness now the double champion. She's taken the reins from her partner. Akira Merene lost the Joshi singles title to Jackie Molnu. Dragonist beat Molnu for it just a couple of weeks ago, and now the tides have turned. This is our first chance to see Akira Merene, the mistress of a thousand holds, a submissions expert, in the ring since her initial defeat to Jackie Molnu. Going around and oh, arm breaker by the challenger. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm projecting, maybe I'm looking for something that I'm expecting to be there, but it just seems to me that Akira Merene, she, she looks a step off. She looks like a half step behind in most of her moves here. Irish whip across the hypotenuse. A little slow to take advantage, though the tag is made. We're gonna see a royal, pro no we're not. I've seen them do this before. Vertical suplex, kick right to the head. Dragonus now the legal combatant alongside Yin is yet to make a tag in this contest. Good tagging strategy by the Queens. 
uh, tagging in and out, keeping each other fresh. Yen has taken you know, nearly three minutes of damage here. The will we see the tag? I would actually argue Yin and Yang have the better tag team offense of the two teams involved in this contest because they have more experience. They are closer than sisters. They are two halves of the same person. Irish whip across the ropes, drop toe hold. And not gonna allow the hot tag in that exchange. Arm breaker by the champion. Elbow strike to the back going. Dragon drop number three. One of the many moves bequeathed to her by her father. European uppercuts. You're gonna see the dragon drop one, not at the moment. Powerbomb position. Oh, huge powerbomb by the woman from the light side of the human psyche. She's not even the crazy one of the family. There's the tag. And now, yes, I think they're going for the Royal Proclamation. A move that they have used to defend those tag team titles more than once. Cover. No, no, not even a one count as Yang finally gets involved. He gets a German for her troubles. Current legal combatants, Yin and Akira Merine, who's now got a very badly put on Dragon Sleeper, and she regrets it. Not like Akira Merine to make that kind of technical error, but a Heidi Kanrana gets her back on her feet. Off the ropes, missed with the stomp. Again, just that half second behind, that half second slow. And, this is, and you can't afford to be slow. You can't afford to make timing mistakes in a match of this caliber. Roll through Boston, but way too close to the ropes. The referee immediately waves it off. Irish whip. Running knee strike. And again, Akira Marinay just making these small technical mistakes. I, I think her loss to Jackie Monu is throwing her a bit. Here. Oh, kick to the gut. Or knee to the gut, breaking whatever momentum the champion had. Exchanging blows, trying to get a dominant position. One of these two women. Open pick up, open pick up. Five minutes, five minutes past off. Another tag, Kogeki now. Double elbows, very simple. As Dragonus retakes control. Finally, the tag to Yang. The tag is made, and Yin is half dead on the outside. But in five minutes, rolling Lariat by the champion. As the challenger gets right back to the Benjamin instincts, plus the size and strength advantage. Yang could be the secret weapon here. Kept the powder dry for the first five minutes of the contest. You never know. This could have been the strategy the whole time for the, the original tag team. Dragonus, Dragon Drop, Dragon Drop, Dragon Drop number one. That's it. That's how she won the title. But not this time. Yang just too fresh. Now what is this? Going for the arm breaker. We've seen her do this before. Stretching. Tearing at the ligaments. A little exclamation point on the end. Dragonus. Not one to give up easily. We've seen her grow from a little clone of her father into a skilled wrestler, all on her own, all of her own, with her own style, her own technique, her own inimitability. She may have gotten her foot in the door because of who her father is, but she has earned everything she's got. Dragon is sleeper, did you hook it up? Yes, she does. The reverse S grip. The dragon is sleeper, but the veteran Yang with a counter at the ready. We're gonna see the tag Kogek, not this time. Yang checking with Yin, asking, are you ready to come back in? Yin saying no. That's the that's the, the sign of a great tag team. If you know your part, and now Yin saying, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Bring me in. Communication, that's the key to tag team wrestling. Wait a minute. Dragon is distracted for a moment. And again, Yin with some trash talk to Dragonus. 
saying, I fought your father, you're not your father. And that's true, Yin and Yang have both had singles matches against Dragon back in season zero. Not to mention they faced across Dragon in the tag team division. Over the top rope. Uh, what are we, oh, stole! Oh, it goes good for a stunner. That flips her opponent in, brings her in the hard way. And now stomping at the elbow, the human arm, not designed to take impact with that position. Royal coronation here could end it. Tag. This is our semi-final match. This is the Royal Coronation. Are they gonna hit it? The Satsuaza. Royal Coronation. One, two, and Yin. Breaking it up. Perfect tag team synchronicity between Yin and Yang as it always has been. And now a cross-leg crab. Kurt MMA throwing all the weight into it, but just not enough. Yang able to get up, but how much damage is done to the small of the back of Yang and the dark side of the human psyche? We don't know. Up and down. Modified Uranagi there. Oh, missed the Lariat. Kurt no. Again, Marinade just one step behind. This is, this is, this is getting ridiculous. I think this might be the longest tag team title match in history so far. Usually the queens of wrestling are able to put their opponents away fairly efficiently, but they just haven't gotten out of second gear here. Beautiful spin kick! That could be a knockout. Referee says no, Akira Marone is still responding. We're gonna see the tag, we're gonna see the Psyche Slam, I think, here. No, we're doing something else. Double whip, big back body drop. In now, once again, the legal fighter against Akira Merine. Oh, jump, hurricane run out of nowhere! Akira Merine finally getting into the groove, I think. And Ian saying, I've got to stop that immediately. Different takeoff, different takeoff. 10 minutes, 10 minutes possible. Ripcord knee by Yin. is going to go, I think, for the full circle. You see it? I think so. Yep. Full circle! Beautifully hit! Let's take a look at that on the replay. Oh, look at that! Absolute poetry in motion. Back live now at the AWL Arena. AWL 290. Golden glory. Here we go. One, two. That's it! And it's Akira Merine who lost both of her titles. Yin and Yang in the right place at the right time. Here are your winners! I am the new Anime Wrestling League Joshi Tag Team Champions, Yin and Yang! Indeed it was the game of human chess. And Yin and Yang came up against an opponent whose mind was clearly not in the game. For the first time ever, we have new tag team champions in the Joshi division. And now, main event time. It has not been a good night for incumbent champions. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It is scheduled for one fall, one submission or a knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the Animated Wrestling League. Good. Championship. We have had two title matches this evening, and two new champions have been crowned. What does that say? What does that say for the chances of this very large individual of the Empire? Well, technically it says absolutely nothing, because that's a gambler's fallacy. All right. Although it's interesting to point out that the numbers advantage will be on the side of the challenger tonight, as Big Jerry, the, uh, the working class warrior, 
and a very and uncharacteristically excited Frederick Victor, alongside the two female members of their organization, Jessica Kidd and Emily Nagasaki. Of course, uh, Mustache Mountain not going to be here tonight. They're only here for the uh, faction Senso. They're not full-time members of the Empire, but all four of the Empire's contracts apparently are on the line. Even though the women aren't allowed to compete thanks to the, uh, the rules of the Tokyo Athletic Commission. Right now, it's not about the faction sense off. It is all about that very big guy, Big Jerry, possibly becoming the next AWL Grand Champion. Biggest match of the big man's career tonight. I believe this is his first shot at the AWL Grand Championship. I might be wrong about that. He certainly never held that title. And there you see the grand champion of the Animated Wrestling League, the man who defeated Gombe Hishi Dark at AWL 280 to become the champion. He has held that title and defended it faithfully ever since. And tonight he faces maybe not the most difficult challenge of his title reign, but certainly the biggest in every dimension, the largest athlete on the roster, Big Jerry. Big Jerry will have the experience advantage also over Aztec Kaiser Neo, I believe, but not by a whole lot. These two very different wrestlers should be an interesting clash of styles if you're interested in that sort of scientific analysis of the professional wrestling game. Right now, frankly, I just don't want the Empire to get control of the Grand Championship. With titles comes money, with titles, come power, influence. And in this company, maybe a little bit more. There you see it, the richest prize in all of animated wrestling, the AWO Grand Championship. Let's make this a Introducing first the challenger, representing and accompanied by the Empire, fighting out of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the working class warrior, Big Jenny. And his opponent, he is the reigning and defending Animated Wrestling League Grand Champion. Fighting out of parts unknown, tonight he makes his third title defense. He is Puroresu Rohochi, the bearer of the star of Aztec, Aztec Kaiser Neo! The Animated Wrestling League fans on their feet for the championship. This is a sanctioned Grand Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL senior official Joey Mamadouche in charge. There you see it, that's what it's all about, the Grand Championship on the line. Shaking off the nerves, shaking off the cobwebs. 30 minutes on the clock, away we go. And oh, the drop kick misses! The initial volley, oh, it, oh! The challenger imposing his will on the champion in the opening seconds. It's only one fall to a finish. All you have to do is keep a man down for three seconds and you can be the champion. The grand champion of the AWL, the most prestigious title in all of animated car wrestling. that corner. The key. Oh, look at that! The strength, the power of the champion! Boom! The star of Aztec granting superhuman ability, superhuman strength to the champion, a true hero of the Animated Wrestling League. And Aztec Kaiser Neo is going to have to keep one eye on his opponent and one eye on the three British people on the outside. Airplane spin, simple but effective by the challenger. How's he going to finish it? Wasteland style. Shades of Stu Bennett there. Right hand, return, drop to hold into the middle rope. 
He's not going to do a 6-1 knot. No, he's not. He's not possibly going to. Okay, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Cover with the title on the line. One. We've already seen two titles change hands. Aztec Kaiser Nia realizing I'm not going to wait till two. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to kick out as fast as I can here. Drop down. And the immovable object. Kaiser punch. Kaiser just was about to make the cliche. The Kaiser punch. Can he follow it up with the Kaiser smash? Not today. Not in the first two minutes. Aztec Kaiser Neo empowered by the star of Aztec. Far more than a mere man, but even he cannot manhandle Big Jerry, the working class warrior. Frederick Victor chastising, yelling at him, hurry up, win this. Big Jerry, a former tag team champion, a former British Openweight champion as well in this whole country. And there's the powerbomb cover for the one, two. Kick out quick transition to a very simple Boston crab. The challenger not known as a submission wrestler. He doesn't have to be given his size. And his ability to assert his dominance over his opponents. We're not even three minutes into this and the champion looks exhausted. Lateral press, hook of the leg. One, two, no. The champion kicks out and you can see frustration building on the face and in the body language of the working class warrior, Big Jerry of the Empire. He's given the champion a run for his money, but as to Kaiser Neo, Hitting those drop kick, those leg drops right across the throat. Kaiser kick! Kaiser kick, the super kick from the superhero. Into the cover, the referee's out of position. That could have been it. Kaiser realizes what's going on. So he's gonna, uh, no, he can't possibly do this. Kaiser! Smash! Good night. One, two. I do not believe what I just saw, ladies and gentlemen. Feeling the power, trying to invoke the star of Aztec. He's not gonna go full Kaiser in, not on this match, not in this situation. That's not what the title of the joke of the gem in the forehead is for. It's not for defending the title, it's for defending the world of wrestling. Your Kaiser punches in the corner. Followed up by a drop kick. And Kaiser punch! Kaiser punch it! One, two, three, that's it! Referee not distracted by Frederick Victor. And the champion retains. Let's take a look at some of that. That first Kaiser punch. Absolutely incredible. And I did not think he could physically do the Kaiser Smash, but he pulled it off. Well, the challenger gave as good as he got. Throughout the, this is only three minutes into the match, this clip here that you're seeing right now. And Aztec Kaiser Neo barely moving. One, two, a second away from becoming champion. There we go, Kaiser Smash. That was the beginning of the end. But somehow, Big Jerry, to his credit, able to kick out. Here is your winner, and still, at the Mini Wrestling League, from the champion, Aztec Kaiser Neo! Ladies and gentlemen, next week, that man you see on your screens right now will try to free Majiku from the control collar. The Faction Senso will continue. We're in the home stretch of the season. But for right now, until the next part of the Double Shot Weekend, thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Kimarida.